What is going on guys? This is Missin and we just got a bunch of new interesting cards to reveal and uh, I can't wait. So yeah, before this video starts, you already know the drill. Friendly reminder to smash the like and subscribe button. And now let's get right into it. So the first card is Dogmatic Cal... That, that's, a, that's a pun. Dog, Dogmatic Calamity Alba System. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, good luck seeing this uh, 10 times really fast. Anyways, Dragon Fusion, okay. Dark level 8, 4500 attack and 25 defense. You are a big boy. It requires Fallen of Albaz and six monsters in your grave with different names. So in other words, you're trying to summon this with either Albion or Lubellion. You obviously can't summon this directly with Branded Fusion. At least Branded Fusion gets you two materials directly in your grave. And then Lubellion can discard a card, which would be the third. But then you still have to work for these other materials. Your deck does not play hand shops, so you're going to have to find other creative ways of getting a bunch of different monsters in your grave. It's not the kind of thing that you can summon right away with one single card with like no context. You have to summon this in kind of like a grind game in a way. Uh, must first be special summoned, obviously. Um, I was not expecting this uh, this card to be easily cheated out. You must send one card from your extra deck to the grave to declare an attack with this card. That is literally a beneficial thing because every single monster literally in the uh, Despia extra deck is extremely good to have in the graveyard. They, they all have fantastic effects. Anyways, once per turn, if you control this fusion summon monster, and have six or more fusion monsters in your grave with different names that mention Fallen of Albaz's material. Again, very easy to do, um, because of the fact that you can attack every single one of your mo uh, opp opponent's monsters and you can keep sending cards. You can send all cards in both players' extra deck to the grave. So, my issue, right, is that this should never be relevant because, I mean, it's only gonna come up once you attack, like, six times by sending, like, six monsters. But at this point, your opponent is already dead because you have 4,500 attack and you can attack every single monster, so... Honestly, nothing really matters when you factor in just how difficult this monster is and the fact that if you do summon it, you should win the game and nothing else is really important, honestly. So all those uh, effects are just extra fluff. Uh, if they come up, like, it, it doesn't matter because, again, like, you, you probably won the game at this point, but whatever. I mean, it, it's cool. Uh, if I ever see someone resolve this effect and still not win, there is a problem somewhere, like, a, a really big problem, so... Yeah, this effect, it, I mean, this card j just could have been a little different. I'm obviously not complaining. It's a good card. It's a really badass card, and it's also absolutely beautiful. Uh, really have to look into, like, the design of it. Like, what is it, like, really made made up, like, m made out of? It's clearly made uh, made out of Lubalion. I can see the hair. Well, th that should be Lubalion. I don't know. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section, but definitely a really fantastic card. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, now we've got some uh, Tenpai Dragon cards. This is where it gets crazy. All right, so the first one is... Oh my god, it's yellow, bro. We got all of the colors of the alphabet. That's crazy. This one is Tenpai Dragon of Gen Roku. Weird that they have it like that. Okay, sure. I mean, no, it's, it's fine. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn if this card is added to your hand except by drawing it. Add it to your hand, even from the graveyard to the hand or from the banish to the hand or whatever. You can special summon it as a tuner, then you can increase its level by one if you want to. You don't have to. That's pretty nice. Quick effect, you can tribute this card, special summon one tent by dragon monster from your deck except itself. Also, you can all special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except dragon monsters. Um, this is... A Mirror Swords Knight. Quite literally, it's better than Lone Fire Blossom because it inherently beats Valor. You go normal summon and then immediately affect, or your opponent can like Valor preemptively, it's not gonna matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't hurt you whatsoever. So, this is like an additional one card starter in your deck that was already consistent to begin with, but now, I mean, it wasn't consistent enough, honestly. This is definitely needed, it, it definitely helps a lot. And the fact that it also is just another card that is really good to add to your hand. With the field spell, it's like an additional layer of play. I seriously like that. So I think this card is remarkable. I am seriously down. And again, it is another one of the ways to synchro summon because you can't always rely on Zongdora. I believe the the, far, uh, the level 4 red dude. Uh, that's the only tuner right now. But this is a card that can be a tuner. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, I mean, it can be a tuner or it can not be a tuner depending on uh, how you want to use it. So yeah, I really like this card. Yeah, we can never complain about extra names, right? Anyways, th this second card right here is Sangan Kaihu. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's must return. It's a trap card. So, obviously, it's um, it's a little slow. I hate saying that. I hate saying, oh, it's a trap card, so it's slow. But a trap card in a deck that tries to go second and OTK, usually not the best. In Cyber Dragon, we had Cybernetic Overflow, and that card was really good in Cyber Dragon. But that's 
that's a different story. It's because Cyber Dragon wasn't really an OTK deck. It was just like a going second deck because it had to. And, you know, it that, that's how it broke boards. It, it would contact Fuse and then break like half of the board. And then you would set a bunch of back row and then break the, the rest of the board on your opponent's turn. So that's the reason why the tra Cyber Dragon Trap deck list uh, worked. Uh, oh, I, I, I wonder how... Mm, uh, yeah, okay. I wonder how I know all of that. Anyways, um, this card reads, During the main phase, if all monsters you control are fire dragon monsters, minimum one... And your opponent controls more monsters than you do, and this main phase. This is just like a, a way to make Kaiser Colosseum turn into a trap card. Keep it exclusive to Tenpai Dragon. This is not really good. It doesn't skip the turn. It only ends the main phase, so then your opponent goes into battle phase and then main phase too. Because this is only going to be playable from turn 2 onwards. It's not like you can set this card with like Aryas and then randomly find a way to summon a Fire Dragon, turn 0, and then literally skip your opponent's turn. No shot you can do that. It would have been sick though, but nah, this, this is very gimmicky. I don't really like the first effect. If three or more attacks were declared this turn, you can banish this card from your grave, draw one card, then you can special summon any number of the Tenpai Dragon Monsters from your hand. I'm not gonna lie, this effect is also irrelevant, and the reason why I say that is because by the time you get to attack three or more times, you are killing your opponent. You don't need an extra draw. It, it's not gonna make... It's not gonna keep you, it's not gonna make you extend even more. And again, if you can even get to like two attacks, it means that you got your stuff going because Tenpai Dragon is a hit or miss kind of deck. There is no in between. You can't attack four times and not kill your opponent or attack like two times and not do anything. You're either attacking once because you're, go, you're going like normal summon a monster, it gets Valored, attack, battle phase, like end phase, like go. Or you're attacking 10 billion times and you're killing your opponent. So the fact that you just kill your opponent even more when he's already down on the ground, it's useless. Nobody needs a card like that. Nobody asked for this. Nobody's going to play this. I, I hate saying that, but again, a normal trap card, or rather a trap card in general, in a going second deck is usually just a little sus. And this one's just like particularly bad because it's also not a board breaker. So no, uh, don't forget about that. It's not a good card. Anyways, now we've got uh, Dragonite. I made a shorts on this card. It, it is Dragonite. It's really... Hey, yo, look, look at his stomach. Uh, look at his um, freaking eyes. Look at his tail. Look at the wings even. It's Lily Dragonite eating a water watermelon. And then there's, a uh, I don't know, freaking... Right, that's like a fusion of like Rayquaza and uh, another Dragonite combat. I don't know. So he's green, okay. He looks good, but like, anyways, uh, Dora Draco, okay. So even uh, even the name is similar to like uh, Pookie Draco. Yeah, that was the name of the monster. Level three Fire Dragon effect monster. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is normal summon, very specifically, not like normal or special or like summon in general. You can add one level 4 lower fire dragon monster from your deck to your hand. I cannot complain. And the reason why I say that is because this is, yet again, an additional one card starter for the deck. You can go normal summon that and then search your deck for this dude right here. And then use the effect in order to summon the 10 by dragon monster, uh, any 10 by dragon monster from your deck. And then you got like two monsters and then you can summon a synchro monster and then randomly lose to Nibiru. And I'm just kidding because you're going to go into Baidora. You're not stupid. Anyways, once per turn, you can excavate the top card of your deck, and it, if, if it is a Fire Dragon monster, send it to the grave. And if you do, this card gains a thousand attack for each Dora Draco you currently control. Otherwise, place the excavated card on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so clearly, the goal of this card is not to play like 10 billion Dora Draco and play like a Dora Draco deck dot deck. You're clearly, obviously, only playing this in Tenpai Dragon. Yo, Fire Dragons! I'm pretty sure it's like one of the worst typings in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Hold on a second. I have to check what are the other Fire Dragons out there. There's Blaster. It's not like it's a good one. It's literally the worst dragon ruler. Flamberge. Okay, that's a good one. That's about it. <laughs> that is literally about it. Yeah, Salamandra, the Flying Flame Dragon. I don't even know what you are, but you look like garbage. All those cards are trash. Holy shit, yeah, yeah, uh, Evil, Dark Blaze, Horus, ew, you are ugly. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, you're only playing this in Tenpai by Dragon. But yeah, yo, how do you guys like these new cards? Uh, I, I think this card is good. I mean, it's only like a normal summon uh, card, uh, and, that, that, and that's it, really. So, yeah, if you, if you have this, and then you've got, like, Baidora and Fedora, you might have a little too many bricks in your hand. Obviously, like, Fedora was always a brick to begin with. Baidora is good to summon because it searches the freaking uh, field spell, but it doesn't do anything in its hand if you're also drawing other normal summons. So that's kind of my issue here. Uh, it's good to draw in tandem with Zongdora because that one summons itself from the hand, so that's fine. I don't know, it's, it's not a card I think you will necessarily play because then you're gonna have too many normal summons and 
yeah, sure, consistency is important and all, but another thing that is very important is being aware of the level of redundancy in your deck. You want a little bit of redundancy, like you want multiple ways to get your good cards, but you don't want to have too many cards that do the exact same thing. And I think Dora Draco just doesn't add anything of value to your deck. It's just a card that searches Zangdora and that's it, in, in my eyes, really. And then you make the Synchro and then you attack and then... Obviously, Dora Draco is still a one-card combo going second. It's it's still a one-card OTK. And even going first, it's a one-card Hieratic Seal. I can clearly see it in front of me. I, you don't have to be smart in order to see it. And actually, as a matter of fact, I think going first, it might be even better than going second because you search for this instead, and then you tribute it and then summon Fadora, and then you summon back, back this. And then you can make even more than a Hieratic Seal. You have even more options. So... I could look, like, a little more into it. Like, th this card definitely looks like it's pretty nice, but I don't know. Again, I don't think you're necessarily gonna... I, I think the OCG might play, like, one copy of this card, if anything, just because it is a searchable Fire Dragon off of Kaiman. That's it. Second effect is really just, like, uh, completely useless, really. Uh, it gains a 1,000 attack and then excavate the top card. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. And then the trap card, dog shit, like I said. And this card, uh, honestly, cracked. Like, it's really good. It's gonna be probably a... Mm, it's a brick in your... No, it's not a brick in your hand. It's a one-card starter. Oh my god, holy crap. Yeah, this card's insane. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, it says it's a two-of or a three-of. One of the two. I'm not sure yet. But again, if you draw this in tandem with Baidora, it's a little shit. That is my only issue, really. But if you draw... If you draw Baidora and you draw, don't draw this, it's insane. Or if you draw this and you don't draw Baidora, it's just... Yeah, again, I just... There, there's very little ways of getting punished. So I think this card's, like, insane again. So yeah, I'm really satisfied with this wave of support for Tenpai Dragon. I think it's really good. I think it fixes a lot of issues. I think it makes the deck even better going first. Because I can always see those lines with the freaking Dragonite looking ass monster. And then this card right here, it's badass. But like, n nobody really cares about badass in Yu-Gi-Oh. They care about like practicality and use cases. By the time you summon this card, your opponent should already be dead. So I don't know about that. Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Peace.